Hi there, in this video we're going to go over the clock. Now, what we're looking for from a clock, if we look at this little example here, we've got one register here and another register there. So let's say we want to pass the data from this register into this register. Now what we have to do is we'd have to set the enable high to pass the data from this register onto the bus. Now once that register is set high, the enable is set high, that enable must remain high until the set comes on in this register here. So once that set goes high, it can then take that data into this register. And when the set goes low, that new data is then read into that register. After that, we can then put the enable low again, and that will be as we'll have passed the data from this point to that point. So that's how we pass the data on from one point to another throughout the CPU. Now, suggested method for doing that is if we look at this timing diagram here, we have a master clock here, okay? Now, what we would do is we would take the master clock and we would take a second clock, which would be a skewed version of it, okay? So we're skew skewed it by a quarter of a pulse, so it's skewed along a little bit there, okay? Now, what we could do then is we could take that clock and the skewed clock and put them through an, an OR gate and an AND gate, and that would give us these two clock pulses here, okay? one here and the bottom one there as well okay so that's those two clock pulses are the pulses we're looking for because the clock enable completely encompasses the set okay now I try to do that in logism but to get that delay the logism doesn't have that f a delay function but you can add in lots of buffers in and it does pr produce a delay but um, it's, it's it's not very um, it's very erratic, and it's the delay would would it would change throughout the rest of the CPUs as your CPU is getting used. Okay, so um, so in fact it would be skewed throughout the, the whole CPU. So it just wasn't going to work like that. So um, come up with another um, possibility. So I checked out two phase clocks. And I got this here, which is a JK flip flop. Now, I know I said I was going to build everything through the NAND gates as far as possible, but we can replace this with a, a NAND version of a JK flip flop, but I just didn't bother because I just thought it would be a bit pedantic. So, we have a JK, both tied to one, the outputs into NAND gates, okay, and the also the, there's a feedback here, okay, from this point here to there, okay, so I say a, say a feed forward. Okay, and I almost had it, but I was just one slight, uh, one one little bit was different. Okay, it was clock S. So clock S here at this point was inverted from what I've acquired. So I put a, a wee inverter in there and got it out. Okay, the way I wanted it. So let's have a quick look. Now that's the original master clock there. Okay, and this is the enable okay and this is the set and you can see from this point forward if we take this as the beginning of our, our clock pulses then there's going to be one two three four clock pulses so for it takes four or four of the master clock pulses to get through one phase here where the enable and the set change okay and you can see the enable completely encompasses the set which is what we're looking for now what I had to do as well is I'd have to take a copy of the new clock here, okay, which runs a lot slower than the original clock. It's four times slower than the original clock. Now, that's a disadvantage because it's running four times as slow, but we're not really bothered about speed here um, in this uh, CPU. We're just looking to get something that will work. And the added advantage here is that I can now look at every single change now every enable and every set change just by every clock pulse that I, that I, I put in. So it's a, a much finer detail as to what's happening in CPU. One other thing is that I really want the clock pulse to start from here, okay? Because I want it to come along and for the enable and the set, I want them to, they completely compass each other from this point here to that point there okay so I want that to be the start of my clock pulse to, to be the start of, of, of my um, my 
set enable cycle. Now, it was quite handy uh, and within the, the control unit, which really this is going to get the control unit, this enable on the set, um, there's a, a, a stepper, which is really just a, a counter. So I just changed the counter slightly so that the counter was negative edge triggered. So the counter within the, uh, the control unit will actually trigger on the negative edge of this clock. So it triggers there. Okay, so it does actually, in fact, start counting from that point there. Okay, so uh, it all works out fine. I'll actually show you it now on Logism. I can bring that up. There's it is, Logism. Now, make it a bit bigger. There you go. So the clock coming in, uh, JK tied high. So it's just as I was shown in that diagram. So we're interested really in the clock set and enable, so if we... If we get it back to the zero state, okay, so what we want is we want the clock enable to come on first. So enable comes on, so that says um, enable the data on to the bus, and then the set comes on in the new register, okay, so it's now passed that data on to the new register. The set goes low, so that new data is now held within the new, within the register, and then it allows the enable to go low, and the process starts again. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it takes it takes four clock pulses to go through that. Okay, so it does slow the CPU up, but that doesn't make any difference. It still runs fast enough. And uh, now let's have a little look in the uh, the top level here. So, just a wee thing to be aware of, but I'll go through this later on again anyway. That's the master clock sitting there. Okay, I just click it up and down. Okay, there we go, and you'll see the... And what I did was, I, I brought copies of the clock. So that's the that's the clock that goes at quarter of the speed, and that's the enable, and that's the set. So I brought copies of them up, and I put beside it the 010, because what we have to be careful is that if we ran through a simulation, at the end of the simulation, these clocks could be sitting in any particular state. So whenever we went to start a new simulation, we wouldn't be starting with the clocks in the right position, okay, within the clock cycle. So we'd need to make sure that each time we ran through a, a simulation that um, these are just sitting in the, in the right position, okay. So the correct position is Oh, I've blocked my delay there. That's the correct position. So one being enabled and uh, this being low and that being low. Okay. Uh, so that's one of the one of the things there. Let's see what else we have. Um, well, I'll explain. There's other other things about the clock here, um, but I'll explain that whenever I go through the, the external RAM. Let's see anything else here. So that's the clock circuit here okay so the main clock's just coming in and that's that clock circuit that i just showed you a second ago and it's getting to the clock and the clock enable and clock set in the control section and that's really all i want to to show you for now uh, next time we will start the control section okay thank you goodbye